Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Natalie from Living the Dream Permaculture and today's Saturday which means it's rest day and um, we've all been pretty sick. We've all had a cold and have been knocked about a bit by it and it's Boxing Day so it was Christmas yesterday and um, we just stayed at home and did nothing much because we weren't feeling very well. So even though it's Saturday and Garden with Me Day, which we will be doing, um, we also have to set up the kids' Christmas present, which was a trampoline. So we'll be doing that a bit later too. But first, I'm going to go plant some more sunflower seeds because that big sunflower I tried to save last week didn't make it, unfortunately. Um, so I cut off all the flowers because all the side shoots opened up um, and I took them inside so I can enjoy them in there. Um, unfortunately the seeds in the seed head that I thought um, would have developed didn't develop so I've sprinkled them anyway maybe a couple of them um, had a center in there that they could grow out of um, I'll turn you around so you can see where it was um, but I thought I've got a few back there still uh, but I thought I'd sow some more along this back edge where that mesh is and over that fence and hopefully we can have a forest of sunflowers. It's still early enough to grow them um, here. It is late December obviously <laughs> but we're a month down into summer so they grow fairly quickly especially in the heat and the rain that we've been getting. So let's go sprinkle some seeds that I saved from last year. And this is the sunflower I was talking about that unfortunately didn't make it. Its roots had all snapped off. Um, basically just lifted that up out of the ground. So it was a nice big one. Unfortunately, um, it didn't make it and either the wind blew it over or a bird landed on it to try and eat some seeds. But I saw no damage so I think it might have just been the storm and the wind. As I was sowing my sunflower seeds, I looked over the edge because I'm also throwing some down here. And I saw a dahlia growing out between a couple of slats of wood. I have no idea how it got there. I harvested a huge cabbage here yesterday for Christmas lunch. And um, I must have put a tuber behind there and it couldn't grow because the cabbage was so big and it was blocking the sunlight. So I think what happened is it just went out the side. So it'll be interesting. <laughs> it'll be interesting to see what happens there because that's a bit odd. The corn is starting to send up its male flower that's full of pollen and soon we'll be getting little silks down the side which are the females and that's where we'll be getting our corn from so I'm really excited it's doing so well I'm wondering if this was a dwarf variety because it's not getting very big but it's super healthy um, I can't remember what this one is unfortunately um, but I have a feeling it was a dwarf one um, looking forward to some yummy juicy sweet corn and melon progress they are going nuts um this is some of the first melons i planted out and they survived really well i think we're getting some flowers back there um i've got some more in a different veggie patch that aren't as big but they haven't been in the ground as long so today our main task is going to be the bottom monster veggie patch. Um, that needs a lot of attention. I went in there a couple of days ago. I was still feeling really crappy, but I wanted to plant another round of corn seeds um, because one lot had got been demolished by slugs probably. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so I need to go down there and clean up the other seven beds. Um, I think there's some garlic I need to harvest. There's a lot of weeding that needs to be done some general tidying up um, staking of tomatoes hopefully they'll get done today it was supposed to be done two months ago but um, we just haven't had the time I don't like staking this late but it needs to be done because I'm getting fruit set but before I go down there I was going to tidy up some of these lilies that have already um, finished flowering so I just thin it out a bit in there so the flowers in the back can get some sunlight I might so some zinnias in there um, as a late crop because none of the zinnias I planted earlier have survived the slugs and snails. Um, so yeah, I might um, might sprinkle some in there. I might even spr um, sprinkle some sunflowers at the back there too. I'll see what space I have and I'll go have a look at my seeds and see what seeds I have left. I'm in here at the back of my tank patch 
needs a lot of work there. I think that might be next week. <laughs> but I wanted to show you the straw flowers. So pretty. Um, and I've got some corn flowers too over there. So that's pretty cool. I can pick those and dry them and put them in teas or cakes and stuff. Got some dahlias. These are a seedling dahlia and they've done really well in this position. Um, pretty sure that's a gladioli spike and a nice hyssop, which I'm looking forward to because I didn't grow, have any success with this last year. It all got mowed off by the slugs and snails, but this year it's really big. It's up to my hips, so it would be nearly a metre tall, um, maybe about 80 or 90 centimetres. Looking forward to seeing that in flower. Um, I've got a few more lilies in the back there. And I've had a couple of late poppies open up. Really enjoying poppies at the moment. Got a few more here. I'm not sure what variety it is. Um, these ones down there and the orange ones. I haven't had heaps and heaps of luck with poppies in the past, but um, I transplanted these ones. And they don't like being transplanted because they hate their roots being disturbed, but these ones survived, so that was really cool. And it doesn't really look like it, but I have thinned out this section. Um, these are the spent plants. So hopefully a few more things in the back there can take off with a bit more sunlight, and I may even interplant there. I was out here a few days ago and noticed all the new flowers on the tamarillo and all the new baby fruit, which is really, really cool. Um, it's the most flowers and most fruit we've had ever. This tree is about 18 months old. We got it as a tiny seedling. You can see how big it is now. It's finished um, growing and now it's just going to bush out like this to continue to stay like that. Um, it is in a protected area, so this tank and the house protects it from um, westerly winds and easterly <laughs> winds. Um, the embankment here protects it from most southerly winds, but it does get a few northerly winds. Uh, we don't get northerlies often, but when we do, they're not very nice because we are so open to it. Um, and it hasn't struggled in the frost because it's a bit more protected here because of the tank and the house. It is absolutely possible to grow these in a cool temperate climate. It just needs to be in a sheltered, protected position. I also noticed that my pepino, which we've grown here, it's completely overrun by perennial grass, which needs to be weeded out. It's very, very painful. <laughs> um, but it's breeding beautifully and we're getting a heap of fruit and flowers don't know if you can see but that one there is actually pollinated and growing um but we're getting lots of new fruit uh flowers sorry and heaps of fruit hiding in there another one there so i'm looking forward to these um, we are getting these stupid harlequin bugs which suck sap out of plants so hopefully they leave this alone because i've noticed a few in here but this is really huge it, it starts from here and it goes all the way to the tank there. So I think we should get quite a bit of fruit from that. And pepinos are like a perennial melon. They're not as sweet as a rock melon, um, but they're very, very similar. So uh, we're looking forward to having that. Melons are very hard to grow here um, because my soil isn't amazing. I'm working on that obviously and it's improving every year um, but they like the rich soil lots of moisture which my soil doesn't hold or didn't hold it's getting better like I said um, and they like a lot of heat and the last two years we haven't had a lot of heat during summer being a La Nina this year I'm highly doubting that we're going to have a hot summer or yeah a summer at all kind of like last year we had a lot of smoke haze last year though, which affected my plant growth. Um, this year, hopefully no smoke haze. Um, and if we get the sunny days, maybe they will produce, hopefully. Um, I'm being hopeful um, because we'd love, we've only grown one successful watermelon and it was the best watermelon we've ever tasted. So I've planted 
about 30 maybe more melon um, vines in the hopes that we could get a couple of melons and in amongst my weeds I've noticed this Cape gooseberry growing I mentioned before that they can become weedy and that I hadn't noticed them um, invading other places but um, here we go here's some evidence of that I might transplant this because it's in amongst my billy buttons and my garlic so my onion chives <laughs> excuse the dog and the cat playing um, so yeah this is going to get way way big and it's in the pa pathway as well so these can get to a meter by meter by meter um, so I really don't think this is the right spot so I'm pruning some of my herbs um, my sage has gone to flower I'm just cutting the spent heads off I'm getting some new flowers as well um, I've got oregano which is going to flower so leaving that on the bees love that um, I was trimming my mint and then I noticed that I'm getting some seed some flowers sorry <laughs> so I'm gonna leave that too for the bees I pruned some out of this area because it was smothering my time um, and I deadheaded some of my calendula the parsley is going to seed and the lemon balm is sending out their little flowers. The bees love lemon balm. Um, and I often get little seedlings growing at the side because they do sell seed regularly, re readily. Sorry. Um, unfortunately, I think the dog killed my lovage. Really sad. It had come back and then he kept jumping on it and I think it's gone. So I've got a bare area here because of him. I was thinking of putting chocolate mint, but while I've blocked off his regular entrance because we don't want the ducks at the door, um, he's going to be using this as a highway, so I might hold off for a bit longer. We've still been having quite a lot of rain, as you can see in the rain gauge. It's um, nearly 45 mils in there. And you can see the paddocks that got mown um, about a week and a half ago. They are starting to get a green tinge. I don't know if this is picking it up, but um, I can see a green tinge there compared to the neighbouring paddock, which is still long, dry grass. So um, we also need to get down and make hay very soon. Oh, not looking forward to that. It's a hard job. My clary sage is flowering, which is beautiful, and so is my helichrysum. Such pretty flowers. I reckon they would make a beautiful cut flower in a vase. That beautiful yellow and that dusty purple would actually go really nicely with some of these dry grass heads. I have to do that a bit later. So this is the area that desperately needs some attention. Starting to get a little bit jungly, which I like. The gladioles are still looking beautiful and the dahlias are starting to burst some blooms which I look forward to every year but yes this needs some loving hopefully I feel well enough to get everything I want to do in here done today let's have a look at these leek flowers whoa got a bit of a traffic jam with these leeks falling over but they are stunning Stunning, stunning, stunning. And I know the bees love these. So beautiful. Look at this one coming out of its casing. Love it. Gorgeous. So, oh, another dahlia. I don't know if I showed you this last one. That's a seedling dahlia that I grew last year. There's another seedling dahlia here that hasn't flowered yet. Yellow is the dominant colour, um, so when you grow dahlias from seed, likely you're going to get yellow and likely you're going to get singles, which is just this open centre, um, like a single row of petals in this open centre, and not the nice full decorative ones that we all go gaga over. Beautiful blaze of fire salvias amongst my chilies cayenne chilies, um, both green and purple there. Oh gosh, I'm loving the garden. 
Just love it when it looks like this, nice and full and crazy. I'm hoping that one of these dahlias will be my Cafe Ole. I'm a bit worried that she didn't survive. Hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, because she is one of my favourites. This one's pretty beautiful too. This is the pom pom, a pom pom variety. It's quite big for a pom pom. Um, and she's just lovely and full. They say that bees don't like dahlias um, because they can't get in the center, but I've always seen um, bees on my big full dahlias, even my big decoratives, my pom poms. They've always been in them having a blast. So don't, don't listen to what they say. Plant the dahlias and plant them for you and for the bees. That's my excuse. So with my dahlias, this is another um, seedling dahlia. You can see it's it's a beautiful colour, this one. It's got a little bit of sparkle in the petals. Let's see if you can pick it up on film. Um, but it is an open centre, so it's not desirable for cut flowers or breeders and that sort of stuff. But I still really like this and the bees really like this. And basically what you want to do is every time your petals fall off, you want to pull off, I just pull it like that, and pull off that centre bint. This is where the seeds form and if you don't pull it off, your flower production will be compromised because the plant starts putting its energy into seed production and not flower production. So um, it's still very early in the season, so I pop them off like that and you can see how many buds I've got. And I do this daily, I, I pick off quite a few daily. Um, that one's a bit deformed, but that's alright. Pop that off and it just ensures that you keep getting beautiful flowers for the next few months. You can see there's another seedling one there that I planted last year. This one's a little bit fuller, but it's yellow. I still like it. I think it's cute. So I'm going to try and get some of this, um, I think it's wheat, um, from the straw that I put on. Um, pulled out. I'm just going to lay it on top because it will just act as more organic matter and more mulch in between all that green various tomatoes growing. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to tidy this up. It's gotten a bit crazy because I just haven't been down here. Um, and with the rain and the heat it's gone crazy. So it shouldn't take me too long and then I'm going to go have a breather because I'm starting to feel a bit lousy again which is always fun. Um, and while I'm here, I might deadhead some of my lavender. So there we go, that looks a bit better. There were a few um, deadheads there, so hopefully they'll send up some new flowers. And now I've got to brave this. Wish me luck. Starting to feel dizzy again, so I'm gonna pop up inside. I can't even speak. Um, but I got this section done. I did just lay it down, so you may not be able to notice the difference to here where it's still standing. But it's pretty hot today, it's gonna to be hot tomorrow, so that should really wilt down and I don't think it will regrow. Sometimes if you lay weeds down, there's a few things that will um, send their roots back into the ground and regrow. Um, I'm pretty sure wheat's not going to be one of them, but I'll keep my eye on it. If I notice that it's not dying, um, I'll just pick it up and put it in my compost bin. But I think it should be alright laying down like that in this heat. I'm going to go back up start. <laughs> I'm going to go back inside, have a drink, have a rest, and then I'll come back out and finish this disaster. I managed to finish all the weeding, so this bed's looking good. And I noticed the ones I did this morning have um, started to wilt in the sun, so very happy with that. But now I need to pick a veggie box for my barter buddy, because um, we're about to go see them, um, or my husband is. And um, then I think I will just tie up my cucumbers, and that's probably it for today, because I haven't been feeling great. And it's dinner time, and I haven't cooked enough. So 
I'll have us some veg for dinner as well and then I think that's the day done in the garden or well, partly in the garden <laughs> the cucumbers are going wild they're starting to grow out so this this is why I want to train them up to grow up this um, trellis but I'm gonna see if there's any more because it always surprises me in here how many I actually have so let's see how many I harvest today well, I didn't find any today, which is surprising, but there's a heap of um, small and underdeveloped fruit. So in the next few days, I'll probably get a huge, big flush again. Um, but tying them up a bit later will help me find the fruit and hopefully help the bees pollinate as well. Um, yeah, looking forward to all those cucumbers coming in. <laughs> My baby duck slug patrol demolished my little cauliflower here which was annoying but it wasn't going to get huge anyway so yeah it's a bit sad it's okay i can deal with it i'll pick some basil for her yeah she likes basil and i'll pick this purple cauliflower it's not huge, but still get a bit of a meal out of that. And I'll pick some sprouting broccoli too. Including some of this glorious purple sprouting broccoli. And some of this Chinese broccoli. And a couple of onions. And I think a couple of leeks. And inside I already had a quarter of a cabbage. This one was over five kilos. Um, some cucumbers and some zucchinis. So that makes a nice little box. So there we go. A nice full veggie box. I was hoping I would also get some tomato steak today, but the best laid plans sometimes don't come through. Um, but I have spotted something really exciting and I want to show you guys. Um, as you probably know, um, I'm in a cool temperate area. Um, I think I'm in a cool zone 10, heat zone 4, or is it the other way around? I can never remember. Um, but basically we get really hot summers and we get fairly cool winters for Australian standards. Um, we don't get snow often. <laughs> we, sn we got snow twice this year, but that's really quite rare. Um, we can get days in the 40s and it can go on for a couple of days um, so 40 degrees Celsius which is over 100 Fahrenheit um, and then we can get days down to zero not often do we go below zero um, I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit but I think it's around 20 but anyway I wanted to show you something really exciting because in my cool temperate area I have successfully grown rosella for the first time. This is my third summer attempt. Um, and my only, the only difference this year was I um, started them in my hot house early, which I usually do, but I then potted up. Um, usually I wouldn't pot up. Um, but one of them absolutely went crazy in there. I'm not sure why, um, but it did. And then I transplanted it outside maybe four to six weeks ago. And now I'm getting my first fruit on it. So this is what I'm talking about. It's hibiscus, rosella, it's got a few other names. And it forms these flowers and they make these sour petals that you eat. But you can dry them to make tea with them, which is how I use them. Uh, because I make a lot of um, kombucha and I just like drinking it as a cold iced tea in summer. Um, but I'm interested in eating them this year. The fresh ones uh, because they are delicious dried so I can only imagine how good they are um, fresh but I'm really excited about that that's a huge win for me I had said to myself if I didn't succeed this year I wouldn't do it again but third year lucky and of all years a la Nina you can see the other ones they're still fairly small compared to this one but um they haven't really done much in the few weeks that they've been out here and I'm going to be tying up the cucumbers now. I use this, um, I believe it's carpet wool. 
Um, I got it from a recycler. Um, he sells it as art supplies and I got it ages ago. And I've been slowly using it up in the garden because it decomposes because it's wool. So once it's done, once I'm done tying everything up, you can see last year's string here. Um, it falls to pieces in the weather, which is fine. Um, but I don't have bits of plastic then in my garden. So I really like using this. And because I have such a big garden with so many things that need to be staked, like these tomatoes, um, I, yeah, I go through a bit of it. So it's nice not having to think about disposing it. So this is what it looks like tied up. The leaves will um, change direction once they get accustomed to the sun. But I've noticed a few fruit under there, which was hard to spot um, without it being tied up. So I'll harvest those tomorrow. There's another three over here. There's another three over here. So it definitely pays off to train it up. It looks like the first Indian burr cucumber is forming. I'm so excited to try these guys. Apparently they're really prolific. Um, and they look pretty funky too. So well, that should be fun. But that one's going up now. And as is that one. And we just have this section to finish off. There we go. They are all tied up. I think it looks much better. Um, it'll look amazing once they start growing up there by themselves as well. So very full and we'll be having lots of cucumbers very soon. Before I go inside I'm going to tie up this trombo because it's getting huge and then I'll start picking dinner. Isn't that right puss? Hey? So there we go tied up. I'm hoping that will look amazing once it's fully covered. I'm hoping it will also survive because trombos get big and heavy and my arch isn't the best so we'll see how we go. Thank you so much for gardening with me today. It hasn't been very eventful because I haven't been feeling the best but it's dinner time so it's time for me to go in. I need to harvest some dinner so I'm going to take you along while I do that and then I'm going to quickly whip something up. So stay tuned for that and then I'll see you guys next time on Living the Dream Permaculture. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm just steaming the silver beet and then I'll chop it up and mix it with my ricotta with some egg, some cheese and maybe some lemon zest. And I'll be making a sauce with sauteed onion and bacon and tomato paste and water and basically just layer it like a lasagna. Um, top it with some cheese, bake it and that's dinner done. So there it is. It's basically like um, can cannelloni. Um, but lasagna style because I was too lazy to wrap them into the oven and dinner is done. One of the biggest challenges um, on living on a hill, especially the hill like ours where you just don't have any flat bits, is where to put stuff like trampolines. There's nowhere, we've got 54 acres yet there's nowhere to put a trampoline. So I've decided to put the trampoline here in the flattest part of our property, which is the driveway. <laughs> a little bit off to the side that we don't really use. It's close to the house in between both our work areas. So we can always keep an ear out for the kids. And it's nice and shady in the afternoon. We just have to trim this apple slash crab apple tree. It's so this tree 
has both a branch that has crab apples and regular apples on it. So obviously one of those is rootstock. See what you got. Go on, go get it. Get it, Rex. Okay. Good work, Rexy. Rex has got an apple from the tree. Weird dog. One of my biggest pest pressures is that dog. <laughs> Loves his veggies. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Someone is actually referring to the instructions. Yeah, and I've got proof. Which way up these guys? <laughs> he never uses the instructions. I just wanted to get it on film. It's just for you, babe. <laughs>